Good morning. Guys, it seems like most of the time when I'm driving to an appointment of some sort, the weather's beautiful, right? Today, it is absolutely 100% rain. So if y'all are on the road today, please be so, so, so careful. We know everybody on the road is always, always preoccupied. Um, but when it's wet, it just takes it to a whole nother level. So be careful. Uh, let's talk about what are some things to not do if you plan on buying a home or land in the near future. These are some things that you don't want to do. You don't want to incur more debt than you already have. You don't want to buy a, a, a car or a truck or a boat or an SUV or a um, um, sport utility vehicle or a... I think I'm repeating myself, but y'all get the gist, right? If you are going to buy a house or land in the near future, then you want to be saving as much money as possible. Now listen, there are some loans that you require 0% down, but you still want to have a substantial amount of money just for a safety net, right? Um, you may very well be able to buy a house with 0% down, and actually there are some banks right now financing land at 100% down. So if you're interested in that, do get in touch with me. But it's just good to have money as a safety net. It's good to pay down debt. It's good not to go into more debt because what you're wanting to do is have the highest interest, um, the highest credit score possible. So the higher the credit score, the better your interest rate and the better all around for you. So if you are thinking about buying or selling in the near future, um, don't go buy anything major. Don't go finance furniture. Don't go finance appliances. Don't go make any large purchases. In fact, worry about paying down as much debt as you possibly can. There's a huge misconception though, and it's the same misconception I had before I got into real estate, that in order to buy a house, you had to have 20% down. Absolutely not true. There are some loans that you will qualify with 0% down. FHA is three and a half. Conventional, if you're a first time home buyer, is 3% down. I actually do know some conventional lenders, uh, if you meet pretty many guidelines, that can probably qualify you for 1% down or 2% down on conventional loans. Um, rural development, if you've ever heard of a USDA loan or a rural development loan, um, it qualifies anything outside of Lafayette or Lake Charles. So basically anything that's considered rural. And even if it's in the town of Crowley, the town of Iota, the town of Jennings, it's still considered rural. So if you qualify for a USDA loan or a rural development loan, you do not have to put a penny down. You can put down as much as you want to, but you do not have to put a penny down, so that's 100% financing. Um, again, FHA is three and a half, conventional is three. If you're not a first time home buyer, you could qualify for a conventional loan, and that is 5% down. Still, again, not nearly 20% down. Um, so I think a lot of people just have the misconception that, oh, I'm never gonna be able to buy a house because I'm never gonna save 20% down. That is absolutely the farthest thing from the truth. And I tell you this, if you are gung-ho and motivated and determined and you want to buy a house or land, give me a call and we're going to come up with a plan. Because when there's a will, there's always a way. You have to be motivated. You have to have a job, of course. Uh, and it helps if you've been in the same position for at least a year. Uh, if you've switched jobs, it's okay if you've gotten a promotion. But if you're one of those people who switch jobs every time somebody makes you mad, that's not a good thing if you want to buy a house or land. So I would say, if you are thinking about buying a house or land anytime soon and you're in a job that you hate and you've already switched jobs a couple of times, listen, suck it up. Just suck it up. If your goal is to buy a house or land, then stay in that job until you get pre-approved, until you close on the house or the land, and then go find yourself another job. But listen, priorities are huge. Make sure your priorities are in line, and if your priority is to buy a house or land, and you're in a job that you just don't like too much, then like I said, just suck it up until you close on the property, and then go find yourself another job. So don't switch jobs if you are thinking about buying a house or land, unless you are getting a promotion. If you're getting a promotion, or you're switching jobs because you're getting better pay and a better, um, 
something better all along, that's probably okay. But if you're just one of those people that just kind of quit all the time because you're not happy, that's not very smart if you want to buy a house or land, okay? Um, what else? So we said don't buy a new vehicle. Don't buy a vehicle. Don't buy any vehicle, even if it's used. Do not go finance another vehicle if you want to buy land or a house. Um, do not go buy uh, anything like a camper or a boat or a sea doo or any of those things. Don't go finance anything new. Um, don't take out a new credit card. Do not go finance furniture. Do not go finance anything, right? Don't buy a new cell phone because they're going to run your credit. So basically, when you're thinking about buying a house or buying a land, you're tightening up. And you're not letting people pull your credit. And you're paying down your debt. And you're doing all those things to get your credit score as high as humanly possible so that you have a better interest rate and all those good things, right? Because the, the worst thing to do would have to have a, um, pretty much anybody can get pre-approved for a loan. I mean, I've seen people with, I actually had a guy that got pre-approved a few months ago and we actually closed on his house. That man hadn't paid, hadn't filed his taxes since 2018. Now that's insane, and I couldn't believe that. The crazy thing is this, he was owed a refund. He didn't know he was owed a refund. And so when he told me he hadn't filed his taxes since 2018, I thought to myself, number one, how are you not in jail, right? If you hadn't filed your taxes since 2018. But he wasn't in jail because he was owed a refund. So he filed his taxes and it actually helped him buy the house that he wanted to buy, which is baffles my mind, baffles my mind. That's six years without filing your taxes. So anyway, um, if you're getting a refund or if you've already gotten a refund from the IRS, save it. Uh, it'll help you with the down payment. It'll help you with, um, you don't want to be house poor. I always tell people, listen, don't get pre-approved for the absolute max amount that a bank will pre-approve you for because they will always pre-approve you for more than you can afford. What you need to decide is how much do you feel comfortable paying each month on a house or on land? And remember, if it's a house, that house note is going to be your mortgage, which is your house note, your taxes, and your insurance. And if it's in a flood zone that requires flood insurance, that's going to be in, combined in that, that note. So you and your spouse, if you're buying with a spouse, if you're buying with a fiance, if you're buying a loan, you have to decide what is the absolute most amount we want to pay each month without being house poor. Do not put yourself in a financial difficulty. Listen, it's just a house. I tell people it's just a house. That's all it is. It's just a house. So don't put yourself in a bind for a house. You need a house. It would be good to have a house, but you don't want to be financially um, strapped and then you're stressed and you have to work more and all the things, right? So think about comfortably without being house poor, without being stressed too much, what is the max amount that you want to pay in a house note or on a land note and when you get pre-approved tell the person this is the note that we feel comfortable paying this is the max and do not let them pre-approve you for more than that all right and they'll try to because you probably can get pre-approved more than what you want to spend don't do it okay so if you are thinking about buying anytime soon and you're not sure where to get started remember this there are no stupid questions Ask the questions. It's the only way you're going to learn, right? You can call me. You can message me. You can come see me Saturday. We're having an open house at 428 Henskins Road. It's a beautiful home in Roberts Cove. Um, if you're interested in that's in your budget, I think it's 350 ish You'd have to look it up. Uh, I'm not sure right now. But if you go to uh, Realtor.com and put in 428 Henskins Road, you can see the price on that one. But we're having an open house this Saturday. A mortgage broker will be at the house, and we're going to have brunch, and we're going to have mimosas. So come take a tour of a house, come visit with me, come ask me your questions, or come meet with the mortgage broker and say, these are my questions that I have, I want to buy, and they can help you decide um, if it's the right time to buy. If it's not the right time to buy, they can give you some tips and tricks on how to get started, and then you can come up with a plan for buying, right? All right, y'all have a great day. I'm about to lose reception because I'm going through Evangeline. Um, but I will have a gorgeous home coming up for sale in Evangeline pretty soon. So stay tuned for that information on that one. Y'all take care.